Josie Tips, Dag and Beaver with you for midweek racing. We've got uh, Canterbury and Sale to look at today. What's happening, Beaver? Mate, just working away and uh, living large, uh, loving life. And uh, yeah, that's about it, mate. It's getting into winter, a bit chilly at the moment, but uh, that's the way it goes. Yeah, <laughs> boring time of year it turns out. But uh, the racing was still good on yes. the weekend. A few winners for the boys across the board there. Tough finish yes. in Queensland, but we, uh, we found a few along the way. We did find a few along the way. Um, any anything of note for you, uh, Dougie? Uh, I think Covey Lake is going to be very hard to beat in the Derby this week. It's probably the main yes main takeaway. Yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Very. I didn't know how the three odds stack up, but it was very good. And I guess you got to say Fireburn's going to be hard to beat in the uh, in the Oaks. But uh, yeah, one well. What else do we take away from it? Not a lot. No. Saki got sniped. Saki got sniped. Yeah, oh, oh, oh well, as you know, I was with Numerian, so it wasn't far off a nice yes. result there. But um, yes. let's see, we can take it and leave it. And uh, what else happened across the board? Yeah, it's standard stuff in Melbourne. You know, we look at those horses yes. again in two weeks. Filthy, my filthy, my friend Vongole won at fifties. Uh, oh, I don't want to talk about it. Been yes. with that horse ever, as you know. <laughs> I'm um, with old EJ Altibo every time. Got nutted. Um, in a pretty good finish, oh, uh, but yeah. still, still looks like it's got some ability. Yeah, and Pinstripe was impressive again. And oh, outstanding! Win again. Yeah, outstanding so, win. That was a very easy watch. Uh, I think it we had a pretty good day in Melbourne actually across the board there, and uh, early part of Queensland was quite nice as well. Uh, uh, Zia, we suggested that around thirteen bucks, heavily backed, jumped around yeah, five got bucks, in, and, uh, and won well. So. Do it all again this week. I think we've got yeah, Kovalika backing up into the derby to talk about this week. That'll be Thursday night, as well as uh, whatever's happening, I assume, down south again. Uh, but let's get to, yeah, anything else from you? Nothing for me, mate. Let's okay. get into it. Cool. Canterbury is uh, where we're going to kick off first. We'll be should be on a good track. The rail goes to the three-metre mark, standard Canterbury fair. Uh, tail, a similar tale to last week. Not the most exciting cards I've ever seen that we've we've done, Beaver. Not the most exciting cards we've ever done, but uh, I'm uh, positive enough that there's a few winners in there. Kick off with the babies, 1,100 metres, a two-year-old maiden here. Has anything caught your eye? Yeah, I think the favourite here, Zuccarette, looks, uh, uh, if anything, to go by its recent form, looks uh, perfect for this. And $2.30, I think it's not bad. It finished uh, less than two lengths behind Zia, or she mentioned there. And prior to that, only a couple of lengths behind Dipsy Doodle that both have uh, pretty good form in town. I think if it can bring it anywhere near that, tried well prior to that, brings any near that form, it should be going close here. does look uh, pretty obvious, doesn't it? All that form, as you've said, uh, looks pretty good yep. to me. Gets a right run inside gate. Uh, if, if there's dangers here, I think it might be the blue colours. Belladone and relatives both haven't been off the bit in the trials and probably have some ability, I'd suggest. Yep. Uh, twelve fifty. We've got the two year olds again here. We've got form coming from everywhere. We've got a two, two point two something million dollar filly as well. Uh, it's all happening. I, I'm I'm going for some fresh blood though. I, I like the trials of Mogwe last week, and it uh, pops up here again. Extra trial was saved from then for this. Uh, I think can uh, can maybe run better with Zach Lloyd going. Can maybe run better than a ten bucks suggests. And uh, I think that um, – oh, I thought it was interesting that Jay Mack actually ended, stick, ended up sticking with uh, Dumabai instead of the the Coolmore horse who usually jumps on. So was there any lead there? Um, maybe back on a dry – it can improve. I thought the congregation did trial well, the the uh, expensive horse here. But uh, going to spec the the blue colours here fresh. What are you thinking? Yeah, I, I narrowed it down to two. I, I narrowed it down to the other blue colours. I thought it could run yeah, well. Yeah. Thought its last trial at Hawks Three was pretty good. Um, after not being overly tested in some other ones, only had the one start at Cranbourne. Uh, obviously, things didn't go right there. It was sent straight out um, and saved for next prep. So I think it could run well. And I thought um, number six, Ferro Vero, could run well as well. Uh, I thought its um, trial was okay. And then, albeit at Mudgee, started favourite and ran home quite nicely there over the eleven hundred. I think the twelve fifty suits. Um, they're swooping down the middle. Could be hard to beat. Uh, you do love a Masara runner. Uh, the... Well, they bring it to town. I think that's a, a interesting play there. Yeah, no, fair, fair call too. Uh, Twelve fifty still for race three is benchmark sixty four, and uh, I'm sticking with the market here. I've 
Uh, I was keen on Bunker, Bunker Hut actually when it went to Queensland. It's coming back from a group race in Queensland, back to 64 grade. Uh, G-Max sticks, I think, and I think this is an average race. There's, there's not a lot here, really. Uh, gets the right run, should sit up close enough. 1-1, uh, it's mapped from the Racing New South Wales stewards. So if it finds that spot, I think it'll win this. It's even money. I think that's, that's fair enough. Uh, any tricks to this one, Beaver? No, I think you're right. You can get a bit better than evens at the moment. And uh, it's got the group. Uh, form for this and three lengths by yellow brick uh, is good enough form for this. Uh, should be winning. Uh, 64 grade again over 1900 metres is the fourth. What about this race? Yeah, I've settled on um, Queen Maker. Uh, I think it can run really well. Uh, its form of late has been very consistent. The only time it really missed uh, first or second was in a group three race. Um, outside of that, in the, the class ones and benchmark 64s, has been running really well. It was a nice run last start by Naval College, which I think has got a little bit of ability. And I think uh, one and a half kilo claim for Zachy Loy means it can run well. Yeah, very scary. Uh, I think there's two chances uh, to the market suggests. I'm going to flip them uh, just because I think there's a bit more pressure here for Queen Maker. I think uh, time raid pushes up underneath uh, and it might have to do a little bit more work than last time out. Uh, so I'm going to go with Master Copy. Jet Stanley takes a claim inside gate and he's been getting the job done. Uh, on these sort of horses, the last couple of weeks, that was the first time it had been out to 1,800 metres. It was fine. I think it's better for that run. And uh, we'll fight out the finish. Uh, and, yeah, scared of Queenmaker. Uh, just uh, going the other way for the reasons I suggested there. 1550, benchmark 72 is the fifth, where I'm going to stick with uh, the quick backup horse here, Celestial Spirit. I don't have a great deal of confidence in doing so, but he's on the quick backup, gets Tim Clark, and I assume that means from that gate it's going to try and lead here. Uh, if it does find the fence and uh, has things in its favourite Canterbury, uh, we, I think it's going to be very hard to beat. I'm going to put it on top, uh, but I think the market has pinpointed the main danger. I'm going to say Estelette, the other one on pace, is the chief danger. What are you thinking? Yeah, I've gone for Estelette. Uh, like its recent form, I think it's all been in reasonably good uh Races where the form has stacked up. Um, it was the nice run second behind Larrikin Rogue last night. Beat Grabini, who I think has come out and won since. Yeah, and then week, others, yeah. Yeah, so some of this other form is stacks up quite nicely. So I think it can run well. Again, gets the claim for the apprentice. Um, drawn well, and I think it can run a good race. Beautiful. Uh, 72 again. 12.50 is race six. Uh, what do you have you found here? A bit of a tricky race, perhaps. Yeah, it could be a bit of a tricky race here. I wasn't overly keen. I thought the top three in the market probably held the key. I'm going to stick with uh, turning. Um, third up here uh, was good first up at Randwick and then really nice run uh, last start at Gosford. I liked that win. Only reasonably lightly raced and this uh, track and distance looks to suit. So I've got it on top. Gone with a gut feel here. I'm going to... Give so good, so cool one more chance. Uh, was just right at the back and absolutely no chance there. Hit the line well last start. It now gets Zach Lloyd. It's been carrying uh, some other apprentices. We get Zach Lloyd, gets gate three. I'm hoping can take up a spot if it can get a, hopefully even leaders back, but uh, a, a shot on the rails there. I think it might give you a nice side around the $6.50 mark at the moment. Uh, we'll know by now the bias. Oh, I made the main danger. Welcome, Gypsy. Who has been is flying this prep? Every run's been pretty good. Uh, just nabbed late at Kembla by a talented enough horse in Master Showman. So, uh, but turning may well bounce to the front here under the claim, and, and as you've said, might just uh, catch us all unaware, except for you, obviously. Uh, the seventh is a fifteen fifty benchmark seventy two. Uh, I thought I was clever finding full here, and I looked at the market and it was favourites. Uh, nice enough resumption gets Nash in the last. Uh, in an average race, it's the lightly race one with some upside on top for me. No real, no real confidence. What are you thinking? Yeah, no, I'm going for Iron Man. Uh, uh, Ren today again. Ren today did it. Yeah, Ren. There you go. Yeah. Did he uh, do any good? No, Ren. Uh, Ren fourth actually, I think. Okay. Let me check. Good. Well, I'm not tipping Iron so Man. It's so out, I've, got yeah, no <laughs> I've got no idea. I've got no idea. So let the punters go with uh, your selection there. Um, Daggy and I'll stick clear, but that's what I I did have on top. Ah, no worries. Uh, so if it didn't win today, probably wouldn't have won. You saved some tomorrow. cash. That's all right. 
Uh, do you want to give us? Do you, would you want to tell us where we can find some cash? You got a best in value now. Yeah, I do have a best mate. I'm going race three, number two, Banker Hut. It's my best bet of the day, and my value is race two, number nine, Parade Ground. Beautiful. I'm going to be with you. Race three, number two, Bunk Hut. It should be winning that race. Uh, and the other blue colours, maybe uh, an exotic play there. Race two, number eight, Mogwai. Uh, interesting. We've both found the the two resumers there. Uh, we're heading to sale for progetracing.com.au. Of course, check them out for their free tips, extensive guides, much, much more going on there. And uh, we're heading to sale on a dry track where the rail is in the true. Sale tends to be fair enough most of the time. Sometimes can be a bit little leaderish, but I've treated as fair for this one where we've got a couple of two-year-old races to start the day. First is over a 1,000 metres. Any of these uh, newbies tickle your fancy? Uh, uh, not specifically, mate. If I had to put one on top, I'd go for Creek from the coming stable. Uh, first starter in the blue colours. I think he can run well. A bit annoyed with my mates, Jordan Childs, that's on it. I uh, thought he's right on Cardinal Gem. Wasn't the greatest on the weekend. I thought it was probably the unlucky runner of the day. Um, to finish off the way it did, uh, it was amazing given it was five wide the whole way. I don't know why it had to be that wide. I knew it had the wide draw, but, uh, Disappointing, but yeah, so Creek on top. Are you angry at him or J Mac on Zaki? Uh, no, I think Zaki's ride was okay. Given I mean, he went to the front, controlled the race, and just got had, had nothing in the was just empty. Um, where Cardinal Jam, I knew it could be three wide, but it kind of was five wide with no cover. Um, didn't quite understand that. I thought there was an opportunity to get it in probably a little bit earlier. Yeah, no, fair enough. I, I, I went around it given the gate, but uh, I, I feel your pain. It may get into what a race like the Stradbroke with no weight could be interesting there. Yeah, I just it, to hit the line like it did. Horses, if flying, that was an extra actually. fifty meters, it would have won. Yeah, uh, horses flying. Uh, it's come a long way. Actually, it's funny to see both it and Pinstripe came through. You know, all those sort of summer races. Yeah. The form, the form held up pretty well. Uh, anyway, let's talk about, uh, I should got to give a tip here at sale where I had similar feelings. I thought these two at the top of the market, um, can, uh, top of the weights, I should say, can both run well. Creek, you've covered off, hasn't been off the bridle yet, but um, trials have all been nice enough. Uh, and Boom Boom Ray has uh, trialled up quite well. Latest trial took it away from home to uh, give it a bit of seasoning. Kicking off here, uh, 10 bucks could roll forward and uh, might give you a bit of a sight. Obviously, the favourite here has been impressive, but we've never seen it on a dry track, really, so we'll see how it steps out tomorrow. Race two, 1,200-metre maiden uh, as well. And I've gone looking for fresh blood here. I'm starting to look for these late-season debutants now. We've seen enough of the ones that are up and about, and that's left me with uh, Shadowist on top. Uh, interestingly, that interestingly, it uh, comes down here for Matt Smith. To start at sale mm. and um, trials have been fine. Gets Craig Newt should roll forward and I'm going to go that way from um, she's a factor who's going well enough. We'll, we'll win one of these eventually, but that's why I'm thinking here. What do you, what are you thinking? Yeah, I've gone the same way for the same reasons. I think the money might come for Shadowist and might start favourite in this. Um, interesting. It has had the trial in Sydney and now gone to, to Melbourne. I think that's always a good pointer as well. So I've got it on clear on top as well. Awesome race three, 1400 metre maiden. This is a pretty, pretty low race, at least in exposed form. Do you want to back anything here? Uh, not overly keen on anything here. Uh, that, yeah, I, if I had to have a pick, Calento, the favourite, has got the last two runs on the board have been pretty good um, and suggests it's going to be the, the horse to beat. If it doesn't win, it'll probably run second. It's pretty good at that. Uh, Probably due to win one of these, I could be tempted by the first starter down the bottom. There's Salou, uh, just because it uh, doesn't have any convictions yet. But no, nothing is uh, interest to me really in that race. Uh, and I can say the same about race four, 17, 17, 5, uh, 17, 17 maiden, uh, where I've got upwards on top. It'll roll forward. It was okay last time, resuming. Uh, up in distance, haven't messed around. Your mate Geordie's going to take go straight to the front. I imagine this is going to be hard to get past on top for me. Yep. Yeah, it looks a clear on top for me as well. Um, only had the one start in New Zealand before bringing it here, and that was a pretty good run last start. Uh, not a lot in this. 
Uh, we're sticking at the same distance for a benchmark 64, race five. Uh, anything you want to get onto here? Yeah, pretty awful race here. I'm going for the top weight, high down. Um, pretty consistent. Doesn't win very often. Um, yeah, but uh, this is no overly tough race. Um, just sort of presented a bit of value in the market and could run well. Yeah, I. both these favourites are coming from wet tracks back to dry, and I thought that was a bit of a question mark. So... Mm. This is, I've probably overthought it, um, so I went all the way around the world and I've got Sir Rockford on top. Don't want to back it because I don't trust it, uh, but I feel like it'd be one of those races if I go looking for something else, a favourite will win and I'll feel stupid afterwards. But uh, I'll, you know, on the day, probably let this go through to the keeper with uh, too many questions through them. 64 grade, 20, uh, 2,200 metres. Uh, again, not much here. want to latch on to. And I've ended up just putting Sound of Cannons on top. Uh, back to a dry track has copped the wet the last couple. Its first Melbourne run was quite good on the dry. I'm going to play it each way here from Highland Hill, who does pop drop back from black type stuff, uh, which is probably better than this, but uh, not by much. Again, a, a not enthusiastic a race that hasn't grabbed me either. Yeah, it hasn't grabbed me much either as well. I put Sound of Cannons on top here. Uh, just now getting to peak fitness for this preparation. A uh, couple of back, only a couple of lengths by JKN, which I think has got a little bit of ability. Finished a long way off from last start, but uh, prior to that, it did have a win. So uh, there or thereabouts um, and has got some form in OK races in Sydney. We've got a 1,000 metre race up next. Uh, benchmark 70 uh, E. Jumping on his favourite field of flutes, coming through a heavy 10 win with three horses, or you want to go somewhere else? Um, I am going to go through, go for field of flutes. Um, one pretty easy there. Um, prior to that, if you look at its form, it was pretty good. It does jump on the pace. I suspect it will hear from gate one. They're going to have to go past it. And, you know, there's a little bit of stinger out of the ground anyway. Um, mm. Yeah, good enough to win this. I gravitate here to Jungle Sensation, uh, but then realised it's purely wet track. So if it is soft or it's enough cut the ground, I'm giving it a chance. If it does dry out, uh, I don't think it can probably run a place. But uh, it and Field of Flutes are my two main chances. I couldn't find anything else clever here either, so not much more to add. Uh, race 8, 1,200 metre benchmark 70, and I'm going to finish uh, with those those colours of Vongolais with Blood Oath. Uh Gets a claim here. It's up and going. Uh, and I like the fact that it's last handful of starts, it's been able to take up a spot on the pace. Uh, I think it's going to do the same here with the, the claim. And I think it can give you a great sight about the 450 mark. It, it looks a bet to me. Uh, Liberty Steps has trialed well. So if you do like it, I wouldn't talk you out of it. And there's other bits and pieces here, but uh, that's why I'm going to play. Uh, it might help me get over my Vongole hangover, Beaver. Yeah, it looks like a really open race, this one, and tricky one to finish the day off. Gone for one down at number 10 in Rylov. Mm. Uh, it's the third up here. Um, only lightly raced. Only had the four career starts, one, two, and been placed once. And all of those runs have been okay. Um, beat plus fours in its maiden before sent for a spell, and that was a good win. Resumed nicely. And then came out at Pakenham and, and won there when it was favourite and led all the way. Um, I think it can run a bold race here and I've got it on top. Beautiful. Uh, what's on top for the day? You got a best in value on a tricky day at sale? Yeah, it is a tricky day. My best is race for number five upwards. I think that's the standout bet of the day for me. And I'm going to go race eight, number 10, Rylov is my value. Cool. Uh Look, I think upwards is hard to beat, but I'm going to make race eight, number one, Blood Oath, my best. Uh, let's have a crack at that. And race one, number one, Boom Boom Ray was one of the only ones I could entertain around the double figure mark, about 10 bucks at the moment. Uh, what have we got up north? Anything exciting up there? Yeah, look, I've found a few up north. Uh, my first one comes up in race two, number six, Dark Harmony. Put a line through last start first up. I think it can uh, run a good race on its last chance for me. Um, in the fourth race, uh, race four, number six, Missy Muller. Um, wasn't too bad first up um, at Ipswich. Uh, led 
after a trial well at Randwick, has got some form over in New Zealand. I expect it to run better, good value there. Race five, number 11, Intersec, uh, won nicely last start. I think you can back it up here with a nice draw, getting good value there. And then I'm going to finish the day. Race eight, number 12, Ring of Steel, uh, best bet of the day. Did stand out, Ring of Steel, just flicking through then, didn't it? It's a nice horse. Uh, good stuff, Beaver. Got through that in that sharp order. Uh, I will speak to you Thursday night to preview the Queensland Derby and the card there. Plenty of good racing happening up in Queensland. It's been, it's actually been, uh, just quickly, it, it has been a pretty good Queensland carnival. They've got good fields. They've got, it's been competitive yeah. and it's um, one of the better, and had good enough weather. It's one of the better ones in, in the last couple of years, I reckon. But anyway, um, we've got more to talk about then. Good punning tomorrow, guys, and uh, look forward to doing it all again. See you later.